So when nobody wanted Paul, when everybody was scared, Barnabas stepped up, embraced Paul, brought him to the fold, and let everybody know that he's legit. Him and Paul, they did some great things. They were kind of like one of the pioneers that went beyond the church, so to speak. Back then, the Jews were like the church, per se, but the Gentiles were the non-Jews, and Paul and Barnabas were very instrumental in taking the gospel to them. In Acts 15, something happened. In Acts 15, Paul tells Barnabas, Acts 15, 36 to 40, he says, hey, let's go back to a place. Let's go back to all the churches. And, you know, Paul and Barnabas traveled a lot and they taught and preached in a lot of churches. And Paul was like, hey, let's go back to the churches and see how they were doing. And Barnabas wanted to take his cousin, John, also known as Mark. Mark is the guy who wrote the book of Mark. Some scholars say he was Peter's writer. But I want you to have that in mind. The guy who wrote the book of Mark in the New Testament that was Barnabas' cousin. Barnabas wanted to take Mark and Paul was like, nope, you're not taking Mark because Mark left us at a previous trip. I told you, straight shooters are all about the work. If you get the job done, if you bring the results to them, they love you. Oh, by the way, if you want to get along with a straight shooter, have that in mind. They don't mean to be mean. They don't mean to dismiss you, but they're all about the work. So if you want to get along with a straight shooter or get their attention, just get the job done. If it means that much to you, then get the job done. Whatever it is they want, they want to be done. Just get it done and you're going to be in their good graces. Nevertheless, it was all about the work. Mark deserted them. I wonder why. He deserted them and Paul was like, I don't want Mark. Barnabas was like, no, I want Mark. And the Bible says they were in a heated argument and they parted ways. So Paul cut off from the guy who mentored him. He cut off from the guy who took him under his wing. He cut off from the guy who stuck his neck out for him. He cut off from the guy that the Bible says was a good man, full of faith, and the Holy Spirit. That's the guy Paul blew off. Straight shooters are no nonsense. They don't play around. He was like, fine, we're not having Mark. Whatever. They caught up. They had a heated argument. I like to say this. Straight shooters love other straight shooters, which may explain why initially Barnabas could hang out with Paul and deal with Paul. But straight shooters love other straight shooters until they start straight shooting each other. Have you ever seen straight shooters go at each other? Oh my goodness. It's like chaos. Two people, two alphas going at each other. It's like war. It is mind boggling. After going at each other, then they go have lunch like nothing happened. Nevertheless, their strife, their split, uh, paints a picture again of the differences between straight shooters and sanguine. A good thing about straight shooters is they don't allow emotions or sentiments to get in the way of what needs to be done. Something we need to learn and not let emotions get in the way of what needs to be done. Uh, an area that straight shooters need to improve is that to understand that sometimes relationships are more important than what needs to be done. <laughs> sometimes the relationship stands out more than what you think needs to be done. Sometimes having a right relationship is more important than being right. On the other hand, for my sanguine friends, one of the things that we need to learn from sanguine people, things that we need to borrow from them is putting relationships ahead of every other thing. Relationships are more important than work. That's a good thing. People come before profits. People come before projects. That's a powerful thing about sanguine people. An area where sanguine people need to grow is 
Yes, people are important, but there are times that you need to get the work done and not allow sentimental emotions to get in the way of what needs to be done, especially if it's something that God needs you to do. Sometimes people may not like you. Sometimes people may not be for you. But as long as God has assigned you to do something and you're doing it the right way with the right mentality, but people are still attacking you, you can't allow that to get in the way of what you need to do. Nevertheless, Paul blew off Barnabas. And he got somebody else. <laughs> straight shooters. They shoot straight. They don't play. They don't waste time. Well, you don't want me fine. Get out, get out of here. I got somebody else. And that other person is Silas. So this happened in Acts 15, Acts 16. He's rolling with Silas. And guess what happened? They get in trouble. I can imagine Silas saying, well, thank you, Paul. I just hooked up with you. I'm in trouble. I kind of joke about that. But sometimes you hang out with a straight shooter and you get in trouble. The straight shooters, they're fast paced. They just go headstrong and they get in trouble. Yep, first thing Silas gets to do is end up in jail, get beat up on the streets. Thank you, Paul. Great, fantastic. They were preaching the gospel that comes with the territory, I know, but a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You hang out with someone who's bold, outspoken, ready to fight, and you get in trouble. So, that's funny. Nevertheless, the point I was trying to make is that, you know, straight shooters sometimes can ruin vital relationships like Paul and Barnabas. Furthermore, Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. I'm going to highlight a few things here, but here, here's the story. I find it interesting that Paul had issues with prominent people in the Bible. Of course, he had issues with a lot of people, but these are two powerful figures in the scriptures. He had an issue with Barnabas, and he had an issue with Peter. I find it interesting that straight shooters, they like to be in charge. They like to take charge, but they struggle being under other people's charge. That's interesting. That's an area that they need to go. So Paul, who writes this book, by the way, he writes Galatians. And in chapter two, he, he gets into Peter's face. Paul is the writer now. He said, I opposed him to his face. I got in his face because he was wrong. I got in his face. And I told him in front of them all. And got in his case. Now, to give you a context, Peter was behaving one way with Gentiles, which are non-Jewish people. And the Jews, they felt like everybody needed to be circumcised to, I guess, validate their conversion to Christianity, okay? So the non-Jews were known as Gentiles and they weren't circumcised. So Peter was Jewish, of course. So he hung out with Gentiles, but when the Jews showed up, he withdrew from the Gentiles and started hanging out with the Jews like, you know, he didn't want to hang out with the Gentiles anymore. To cut a long story short, it looked like he was two-faced. Peter is another example of someone who I believe has a sanguine personality. I believe he also has a straight shooter side as well, but I think he's primarily an outgoing, friendly person. So Paul writes in Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, that he got on Peter's face because Peter was wrong. He opposed Peter to his face because Peter was behaving one way with the Gentiles and another way with the Jews. And Paul was having none of it. And Paul got into Peter's face and called him out in front of everyone. You can read this story. But don't misunderstand me. I am not saying things do not need to be dealt with. I'm not saying that when something is wrong, it should not be addressed. The issue is not what Paul did. The issue is how he did it, which is often the issue with straight shooters. You straight shooters, you think you're helping people out. But the people you're helping believe you are belittling them. You're thinking, I'm just helping them out. I'm just telling it like it is. They're feeling like, why are you shooting me? You feel like you're talking to them, but they feel like they're getting shot. And you're wondering, why is this person not listening to me? I told them what to, they need to do. They need to do A, B, C, and do this, 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 this. The person is feeling like they're getting shot. And they're not even listening because they're like, why is this person doesn't like me? Why don't they like me? Why are they shooting me down? What did I ever do to them? 
Slow down. So Paul calls Peter out publicly. He's saying he goes to Peter's face in front of everybody else and calls him out. He could have just called Peter to the side and have a conversation and say, bro, this is not right. You can't do this. Now, if Peter didn't listen, then okay, he can take it publicly. But that's the point. The issue is there's a way to do things. We need to learn from our sanguine outgoing people on having EQ. EQ is emotional intelligence. And here's the thing. I know Paul wrote most of the New Testament, but really Peter seniors Paul. I stand corrected, but I believe Jesus called Peter to kind of be the lead, the lead to, to, to lead the church. So Paul is really the subordinate here. He just got saved yesterday and he has the audacity to step up and call Peter out publicly. That was out of line. God has given us the Holy Spirit for us to learn that, yo, I know Paul did that, but that's out of line. That issue needed to be dealt with, yes. Barnabas and Paul splitting needed to happen, yes. But they didn't have to come to blows or have a bad argument for that to happen. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you just have the feeling that, you know what, we need to part ways. You can do so amicably. And I can hear some of my straight shooters say, yeah, yeah, yeah. We tell it like it is, you know what I'm saying? I said, listen, there's a difference between telling it like it is and telling it like it is to you. Well, we got to speak the truth. We got to speak the truth. Listen, there's a difference between speaking the truth and speaking the truth in love. There's a difference between telling the truth and yelling the truth. I can hear some of you argue that, no, talks. we're just keeping it real, you know? I mean, I don't care if they got their feelings hurt. I'm just keeping it real. Listen, there's a difference between keeping it real and keeping it rude. There's a better way. You think you're helping them out. They're thinking you're shooting them down. Hence the term straight shooter. My straight shooter friends, I want to encourage you to slow down. Be slow to speak, swift to listen. It's not what you do a lot of times. It's how you do it. There's a better way. To get things done. Now some of you may argue. Oh we got to get the job done. We got to get it done. It needs to be done. I say yeah. But at what cost? When the cost outweighs what needs to be done. Then you need to reevaluate what you're trying to do. Relationships are very important. Yes Peter should have been dealt with. But there was a better way to do it. Paul said. <laughs> the Paul that I'm using as an example. <laughs> he said to the weak I become weak. He probably wasn't feeling that way when he started off, but eventually he grew up. But to the weak, I become weak so that I can win the weak, not smash the weak. There's a better way.